His backyard was literally the Golden Gate Bridge. Can you imagine that? Every day waking up, going out and playing in your backyard, and there's the Golden Gate Bridge. Absolutely beautiful, huh? So he came to know and love nature. So he started dabbling with a camera and taking all these amazing shots. Let me see. Oh, there he is. Isn't that cute hat he has on? We're going to come back to that guy in a minute, but I want to show you like that. And some of the places that he took pictures of, they became very, very famous. One reason they're really famous today is because they show some natural um, landmarks in America before they were, um, you know, before erosion and pollution and before we came and messed it all up, right? But they show it still in its pretty pristine um, conditions. Look at that. See how he uses the light? Isn't that beautiful? It's one of my favorites. A lot of these were taken in California, out west, Nevada, and so forth, Sierras. So, um, Ansel Adams. Now, I'm going to give each of you a picture. And it's a copy of something he took. Now, I've had to Xerox these or my assistant Xerox these, so some of them are kind of dark, so you're going to have to use your Imagia, right? So when you get this paper, if you feel like whispering or talking, I want you to take that energy and put it here and here because we need all that energy to really sleuth out this picture. Now, if I was a sleuth or a detective, what would I use to investigate? Magnifying glass. So I want everybody to take out your magnifying glass. I know you're middle schoolers, but go ahead and take them out, right? Even adult uh, sleuths use magnifying glasses. Magnifying glass. So when you get your picture, I want you to literally look at every part of this. Investigate every part of your picture. Don't talk to your, your, the person sitting with you. And you're each going to have some different ones, okay? And one or two of these might be kind of dark, and that's okay. You can use your imagination and imagine what is around, okay? Yeah, that would be great if you can make sure they're not at the same. Different. Yeah, all right? So look at it, sleuth it out. All right? I'll wait till everybody has one. Sorry I didn't get you over here. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. Okay. Want to hand something to me? What do you see? All right. Right. Rocks. Good. What else do you see? Water, river. All right. He's the last one. All right. E. 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 Now, look at your pictures. These guys just got there, so take a second and really look at your picture. And on a count of three, I want you to use a sound and tell me using only a sound, not words. Give me the sound of um, some animals that might live in that location. One, two, three. All right. That's good. You know what? You don't have to know. See, the cool thing about um, using your imagination and about creating a story is that you don't have to know. Right now, I'm not saying there's a specific right answer, okay? And there are plenty of times during your day here at school you have to have the answer right, right? So let's enjoy this time where we can play a little bit, okay? All right, so now I'm going to count to three, and when I get to three this time, I want you to make the sound of an element of nature that's in that location. One, two, three. Louder. 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 Now let me hear your animal. All right. Okay, so when I ask you to do these out loud, I'm not asking you to do them for each other, just so you know. I'm asking you just to do it out loud to yourself, all right? Now today, would you be willing with me
to go to some places that might feel a little bit like, oh my goodness, I don't know if that's cool. Would you be willing to go there with me today? Oh, All right. Okay. All right. Right here, right now. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to ask you, well, first of all, look at the picture. And I want you to take your pencil with your right hand. And I want you to decide if you were in this location, if you were in this picture, if you were right there, where would you be? Sitting or standing. Don't tell me. Take your pencil and point to it. Make a little X. Little X. That is where you're going to be now. See it? Okay. Now, on a count of three, don't look at anybody else's. I want you to stand or sit however you might be standing or sitting in that picture. Go. One, two, three. Some standing. Let me have some standing. Good. Okay. Oh, you're moving. Good. All right. All right. How would you stand or sit? Different than yourself. Different than the way you were just sitting. Change it up a little bit. Give me something different. Nice. Nice. Good. Would you be relaxed? Would you be relaxed? Would you be scared? Nope. I'll be relaxed. All right. Let me see. How would you be standing? All right. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to answer them. Write them down. We're going to make a list really quickly. Do you know why I want you to go quickly? No, but that is a good thought. I want you to go quickly because I want you to go with the first thing that comes to your mind. I don't want you to sit here and judge yourself or think anybody else is judging you. That is no, no fun, is it? I don't like living like that. So we're going to live different right now today. I'm going to ask you on, um, yeah, on this side, on the, on the side with lines, write your name in the upper right-hand corner or wherever you wrote it. That's fine. I don't care where you write it. Are you writing? So you need to be sitting down so you can write flat, all right? Can you do that for me? Great. All right, so I'm going to call out. And we're going to go fast, and, and we're not going to talk because we're going to take that energy and put it right through our pencil, okay? Look at your picture one more time, okay? And I'm going to ask you questions about your picture, about this location. If this picture came to life, that's what I'm going to ask you about. And it's your job to just write down, don't have to do sentences, just words are fine, okay? We're just writing down. Ready? Are you ready? Number one. If this picture came to life, all of a sudden, what animals would you hear? Go. Write it down. Write down two or three. What type of animals would live in this habitat? We're going fast, remember? First thing that comes to your mind. First thing that comes to your mind. All right, number two. And if you start to get frustrated because I'm moving fast, please just raise your hand to give me a clue because I don't know what's going inside your head or heart. Number two, if this picture came to life, what elements of nature would you hear? Uh, what are some elements of nature? Cricket. Wind. Cric cricket was the animal. So let's think of other elements of nature other than an animal. Wind. River. Right? Trees. Waves. Right? What? Waves. Waves are great. That works if that's what you think you would hear if this came to life. Write down two for me. <coughs> what else would you hear? What's that? It's dry, isn't it? What you hear? What you hear? Yep. Uh huh. Okay, now number three. If this picture came to life, and you were sitting or standing where you were sitting or standing. What, if you were sitting or standing and, and it came to life and you moved your hand, what would you feel? What texture? Would it be bumpy? Would it be smooth? Would it be wet? Would it be hot? Would it be cold? And, and you can write what it is. Bumpy what would you feel? Cold what? Ice. Okay, write it down, buddy. All right, number four. If this picture came to life, 
What would you smell? What's the first thing you would smell? What would you smell? There are about a lot of pine trees. There's a lot of dust. There's a lot of things that you would smell. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. <laughs> well, write it down. What not what you smell in here? What would you smell in that picture? All right. All right, what type of nature? Like what would that smell be? What type what's the nature smell? That's what I'm talking about. I mean I don't know. Okay, write it down. There you go. What else? Oh well, yeah, all right. What would you smell? What kind of what it kind of smells? Okay, great. Write it down. You would smell the water. Okay. What else might you smell? There's dust and stuff. All right. Now, number five. Number five. I want you to look really quickly before you write down number five. Look at the picture again. And imagine where you're sitting or standing. Okay? And I want you to think, how does this place make me feel? Don't say it out loud. How does this place make me feel? How do I feel when I am in this place? There are lots of different ways you could feel. How do I feel if I was in this place? You don't need to share with your neighbor. And you can think outside the box, too. Deep vocabulary words. Yeah, we always know happy, sad, mad, right? Let's think bigger. Let's think of some other emotions you could feel. Or even happy or sad, what's a bigger version of those? What's a deeper, deeper, more colorful version of those? All right? Got it? Yeah. Oh, that's good. H after the S. Good. Yeah, uh, do you feel alone? Do you feel joy? Do you feel peaceful? Do you feel, I'm not going to give you any more because I think you already know. All right? And if you're finished, I want you to put your pencil down. Oh, no, 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 we're not finished. I'm sorry. Number six. Sorry. What season is it in your picture? You decide. You decide what season it is. Write it down. What do you think? Yeah? Well, what's up there? Is that snow? It does, but it doesn't have to be because that's way high up and the altitude is different. So you can really tell. That's not frozen, right? So it's up to you. See, the cool thing is, guys, is that it doesn't really matter right now. Like, you cannot really exactly tell what season, what month it is from this picture. Right? Because part of it, it's not in color, and it would be harder, it would be easier to tell if it was in color, like if it was fall outside, right? But you can make that choice. You need to make choices, bold, big choices, right? You got the season? All right? Okay. And what time of day, number seven, what time of day is it? I don't know if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Be specific. Not just morning, afternoon, night. What time of day is it? Because that's going to affect how you feel too, right? It does me. 5.30 this morning. I didn't feel as good as I did at 8 o'clock last night. What do you think? That's great. See, that's, that's okay. If that's what you think, you can write it down. Okay, ready? Now, I want you to take your pencil and I want you to circle two elements of nature that aren't animals. Circle your favorite two. And maybe you only have two. Circle them on your list. All right? Two elements of nature, number two and number two. Wait, can you see the number two. You got it. Circle. Oh, you just circle them. Circle. Circle. Well, that's fine. Hard wind's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, number one, I want you to circle one or two animals. 
that you wrote down? Right there, one or two of those. Then you can put both, circle both of those. Put two of those and circle both of those, would you? Hmm? Hmm? You just want to circle one? Water. Sir, you can circle it. Just cir put a circle around it on the on here. Around the word. There you go. Cool. Did you circle? Did you circle two animals? Did you circle one or two elements of nature? All right. And I want you to circle how that makes you feel. Go down to number five. How does that make you feel? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Now, on a count of three, well, first of all, look at your picture and breathe in deep all the way to your toes. Breathe in that picture into your body. Can you breathe it into your body? Out through your mouth. Okay, and on a count of three, I want you to sit or stand big. Go big. Sit or stand, not like you're sitting right now, like you are in this picture. Go. One, two, three. Now, I want you to show me with your face and with your body how you're feeling in this picture. One, two, three, give me a sound. Give me a sound of how you're feeling. You got it. Good, that's good. Let me hear that again. Yeah, let me hear it again. All right. All right, even if you're depressed, yeah, there we go. How do you feel? Exhausted. All right, okay. All right, okay. Now on a count of three, have a seat. One, two, three. Now, I think I'm going to give you more of these. I think we need another one of these. So I'm going to give you a new card. And I want you to take this card. I know you guys have been studying poetry and prose. I want you to write. Well, not really. It doesn't have to rhyme. So if it doesn't rhyme, what is it? Right. Paragraph form. But we're going to, well, well, hold on, not yet, not yet. I want you to take at the, the, the bottom of this page you've already written on, start with one animal that you have circled. Just one animal, you got it? One of those animals. That's all I want, the one, one of them that's circled. And I want you to write a sentence, simple, just write a sentence about that animal. But hold on. You could write, like, let's say, well, I'll write this sentence on the board. It doesn't have to do with any of those, but. Okay, is that an acceptable sentence? Let's all read it together. The car drove. Is that an acceptable sentence? I mean, it is a complete sentence, right? But there's a problem with the sentence. See, I'm writing from my point of view. Well, what is so cool about living in this country is that we have the freedom to write, the freedom of speech. And if I'm writing a story, I'm wasting my time if I just write the story just because I have to write it, you know? Like, okay, the car drove down the street and it wrecked, right? See, but you have no idea what color my car is. You have no idea what my street looks like. You have no idea how that car drove. So I have just missed an incredible opportunity to tell you a story that's inside my mind, inside my heart. See, I think we take for granted that, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Nobody cares what I think. We do care what you think. And you all think differently, and that's very cool to me, all right? So you can just go through the motions or you can take an opportunity to, to really let someone who's reading your story get inside your heart, get inside your mind. You know, when I go to the movies, well, how, what movie have you seen recently that you liked? Or what TV show? What? Oh, Family Guy. Family Guy. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Walking Dead. Okay. The Walking Dead. He likes The Walking Dead. Now. I'm not a huge fan of The Walking Dead. But you were on it. I was on it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't like to watch scary things, right? So for me, it doesn't really grab me. Now, when I start hearing the story, that's what grabs me, right? But 
Have you ever gone at night to, to watch TV and you can't find anything to watch? Yeah. Why do you stop on one particular show? What makes you stop? The name. It interests you. It, it, it captures your mind and your heart and you stop for a second, right? Just like books that you want to keep reading, right? So you have the opportunity when you write, it can be in your mind, it can be a movie if that's what you're writing, you know, but in prose form. It can be a book that you're writing. The whole idea is it's your story. It's in your mind. It's in your heart. But it's your job to get all the details in your writing. So here, the car drove down the street. Close your eyes for a second and I'm going to read this again. The car drove down the street. Okay, open your eyes. Tell me what color, what color is this car? Tell me about the car, yes. Blue. Red, what else? Small. Red, small. What? Dirty, okay. What else? Tell me about this car. What? Fast. Okay, what, how, uh, what, how big is, uh, what, how many, tell me doors does this car have? Sixteen. Four doors? Okay, it's a sedan, right? Okay, and do you know, can you tell me what make this car is? What make is this car? You can, whatever. What do you think? Go for it. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, what kind of car would you have if you could have any kind of car? A truck? Okay, it's a truck. Uh, so, okay, it, it can be a four-door truck. Okay, here we go. So now we don't just have a car. We have a red, small, dirty, fast four-door truck, right? And how did that drive? Yes, it flew, it flew, it threw mud off as it flew down how did it go down did it just go straight did it i mean swerved swerved down and tell me about the street it was curvy what curvy i'm bumpy long and what sporty rainbow colors okay but wait what texture? Like, what's it made out of? What you? I haven't heard from you. What? Uh, what? Meadow. It's meadow. Okay. It's like so. It's grass, right? Meadow. And tell me what's around this street. What do we see? What do we see around this street? Trees. Tell me about just trees. Come on, give me more. What kind of trees? What kind of trees? Oak trees. Thank you. Are they large or small? Huge. Huge oak tree line street. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're adding color, movement, texture. Now you're into my story. Now, see, I'm not going to waste any time now because when I read this now, you're going to know exactly what my story is. Right? So close your eyes. See if I can read this. Here we go. The red, the small red, dirty, fast four-door truck threw mud off as it flew, as it flew and swerved down the curvy, bumpy, long, sporty, meadow-lined street with you. As it, as it, as it, oh, I'm sorry, let me read it again. The red, small, dirty, fast four-door truck threw mud off it as it flew and swerved down the curvy, bumpy, long, sporty meadow street lined with huge oak trees, period. What happened next? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have that story written, but do you get it? Do you see? What did we add to that sentence? What do we add? What did she Expressions. Add? What types of words did what we add? Words? You know. What type of figurative language? Yes. Um, we did add figurative language. Imagery, You're right. Sensory, Imagery, sensory, yeah. right. Adjectives, adverbs, right? Great. So, now, I want you to take that one animal or one of the animals right now. And at, toward, underneath all that you wrote, we're going to do this quickly again because I want you to go with your gut. We gotta access our gut and our heart when we write. 
or it's pointless. All right? Here we go. Now, take one, that's, take one uh, animal, and I want you to write an expressive sentence about an animal that you would find in here, using figurative language, adding adjectives, adverbs. So look at your picture. Hear and see that animal, and write just a simple sentence that expresses what does that animal sound like and what is that animal doing? What does that animal look like? Is it just a squirrel or is it a fuzzy, gray, bushy-tailed wood squirrel? Okay, talk to, tell me about the moose. What does he look like? Okay, well, what color is he? The what moose? And is he large or small? This is a great start. This is a great start. So someone there said the moose and he described the moose, but I was like, well, what color is the moose? How big is the moose? What does the moose feel like? Lizard, tell me about the lizard. What color is he? Describe the lizard before you go forward. The what lizard? And this is a rough draft, so you can pencil in here and there. You don't have to erase and start all over. Okay? Yes, there you go. That's a start. He's a big, fat, fluffy, great, hungry bear. Um, tell me about the sound he make and how, how, he, how did he walk? How did he move? How did this animal move? How did this, what did, how did this animal sound? I want to know where you are. Let's see that. And if you finished, I want that you then to take um, something from number two and make, it, make a sentence using figurative language, bringing it to life. Take something from number two if you're finished. Write a second sentence. Okay, now do one about the wind. So now take number two, one of your elements of nature that's circled, and I want you to write a sentence about that, bringing it to life. Tell me the color, the texture, how did it move, or how did it sound? Got it? Nice. Guys, nice. Good. Now tell it now, write a sentence about the water. Is it nice and cold? Is it hot? Is it still? Is it moving? And how is it still? Or how is it moving? Do you know what I mean? And what color is it? Yes. The what? The. Tell me, what does that say? Oh, I got it. No, you're right. I couldn't see if that was any. Okay. That is great. I'm going to ask you right here to add a color. And a te tell me about that elk right there. The what elk? Oh, you did. I see. The huge bounce. Oh, my goodness. You did. Great. So you use huge up here. So let's use another word for huge. What are some other words for huge? Yes, there you go. And now I want you to write me a sentence about the ice falling or the waves. Okay? I like the ice falling. Do that. All right. Who has your second sentence written? Great. I'm going to come look at it. If you, if you have your second sentence written, what is it? A cold, wet, white, young, loud, chirping. Great. Can you, what color is that bird and what kind of bird? Blue, fast, five, what? This is good. Five what? What? Okay. So what kind of car? Are they old? Are they new? Are they, are they, are they rusty cars? Where, are there cars out here? Okay. So it's in your picture. Got it? Got it? That was good work. Okay, yeah. Okay. If you have your second one, I'm going to come around and look, but I now want you to write one more sentence and where, where you put how you feel, number five. I want you to start the sentence, I feel whatever. Okay? 
because, and then finish that sentence. I feel, and, and you can tell me what color you feel along with that emotion. Really let me know how you feel. That's the only way people are going to get to know the characters in your story. And that's you right now. Yes. You know, because it could be swaying like this, or it could be swaying like jazz, you know, is it? Yep. I feel relieved. Okay. Great. And tell me about the land. What part of the land is it trying to find, you know? Mm-hmm. Great. What color and what temperature is that water? Crashed at the waves. Good. Tell me a little bit more about the waves. Hit the ground. What is the ground like? So just add some things about those three elements. Great. And let me see how I feel. Let me start by saying that was really good work. I feel relaxed. Like, well, yeah. Okay, great. That's great. I feel lonely as if I was. Oh, I like that. Nice, you like to write, don't you? Okay, so take the feeling. Remember we talked about your feeling up here? Where's that? You should have written how this place makes you feel. So right now I want you to write. This place makes me feel whatever because, therefore. Now, when I'm writing, a lot of times I have to go back to my picture. I've got to go back and look at it because I kind of lost... When I'm acting, like sometimes when I'm doing, uh, one time I did a TV show and I had, my baby was stolen from me from the hospital and I had to do it all day long, that scene, all day long. And after a while, I wasn't feeling that sad anymore because I'd been doing it for so long, right? So whatever, if I'm writing, if I'm acting, if I want to access those emotions and get back to an authentic place, I have to go back to the source, all right? So, I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to turn on some music, all right? You've got all your pieces. First of all, okay, on the count of three, sit or stand like you are in your picture. Go. One, two, three, quickly. Different than the way you're sitting right now. Yes. Look at your picture. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now, I want you to read these three sentences that you just wrote. I want you to read these three sentences out loud. You're not doing it for your neighbor. You're reading it out, out loud for yourself just so you can hear your own voice. I want you to read these three sentences out loud. One, two, three. Not for anybody else. Just for yourself. All right, good job. Now, I'm going to ask you to take that blank one, if you haven't already used it, or a blank side. But you need to look at these three sentences you've written. Now, I'm going to turn on some music. And this music, actually, I don't know if you know, you probably don't because you just met Ansel Adams today, but Ansel Adams was actually an incredible <laughs> pianist. And his dad thought he was going to be a master pianist. Um, and he disappointed his dad when he decided to be a photographer. But he took lessons from this guy, Henry Cowell. And Henry Cowell was known for this really weird, dissonant music he would play. Because he would also he would take the strings and he would play the strings inside the piano. Have you ever done that? It's kind of fun. So he had all these interesting sounds. So I always imagine, as Angel Adams was out taking these amazing photographs, I imagine he was probably hearing this music in his head because his teacher, had, he was probably learning this music too, right? So I'm going to turn that on so you can get further into your picture. Now, you're going to write. You already have most of it written. It's already here in these three sentences. Now, what I want you to write is, I am sitting or standing. I want you to start like this. I am... Whatever you're doing, sitting, standing, laying, wherever you are, right? In this blah, 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 right? Hold on. Then I want you to talk about that animal, which you've already written. Then I want you to talk about that nature element, right? 
and then I want you to talk about how that makes you feel, okay? I'd love it if you added a couple more in there that you are, but for time's sake, we might stay short. I feel because, I feel blank because blank. Got it? So I'm only going to give you a short amount of time because I want you to go with what you're thinking. Now, I look back at your picture for a second. Look back at your picture, breathe it in. And if this picture came to life, this is what you would tell us. I am sitting on top of this cold, icy glacier, hearing cracking wind as it crackles around the moose. You got it. Bring me into your story. Don't waste your time. Friday. Good. Describe where you are. Great, and then talk to me. You didn't write about the animals that you already wrote about, right? Keep writing. Keep going. Paint this picture for me. What's the valley like? Saying the end, can you say I see a beautiful fur jumping as it's hurt? Good. 
You've got about a minute. Now, make sure you put how it made you feel. And then if you're done, write a last sentence that says, I want to, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay? Do you want to go? And why? <laughs> Present tense, you feel, I see, I hear. Sitting on, I'm um, sitting down, freezing, so there's a pants and toes, washing out, so it's so fun. I want to go because I'm cold. Good, but hold on. Tell me about the ink. Ooh, wrong. That was wrong. All right. How are you? All right. Okay. On the count of three, some of you aren't done, but we're going to move forward because I want to do this one last little part, and then maybe you'll have time to come back and finish it up. Maybe one day. Well, we're going to do one thing really quickly. All right. So I want you to sit or stand as if you're in this picture one last time. I know. As an actor, you have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. All right. Now, you can choose to just do it because I'm asking you to do it. Or you can actually honor what you've written and taken all this time to write. Okay? So, sit or stand like you're sitting. What does that look like? Remember, you're, remember we tell stories with our what? Body, voice, face, mind, and heart. If your heart's not into telling me what you wrote, who else is going to care about it? Right? Exactly. But if you care about it, I know I'm cold too. All right. So let me see on your face how you're feeling in this, in this place. Good, good. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now out loud, just to yourself, I want you to read what you wrote. Go, one, two, three, read what you wrote. Nice work. Have a seat. Now we're going to take one and I ask my friend over here. I can't remember your name. Lane. Lane, can you come up here with your card? Okay. So Lane's going to read his out loud. Lane, is there one person in the classroom that you trust? Me, Justin. No, no, let him pick. He's got his own heart, his own mind, and his own choices. All right? And I value what he does. Okay, come on here. I want you to sit right here. Turn around. Sit right there quickly. All right? And I want you. Your job is just to read this to him. Now, if you read it like this, no. so you got to be loud. you got to be clear, okay? And keep looking at him. Look at it and look at him, all right? So, and your job is to do what? Listen and not judge. Listen and support. Listen and add to what he's doing, not to take away. We are here to build each other up. And that is what we can do merely by listening. One, two, three. I am standing and watching the bobcat. Like it was uh, just standing there. Then I knew it was hungry because it was just about to eat the little blue fish. And then I heard this big boom sound and the ground is shaking. And it didn't stop until like two minutes passed. But the bobcat was still standing, staring at the fish. But I could tell it was scared. I felt amazed that the bobcat just stand, standing there, but I was scared too. What do we do? Excellent. Okay. I want you for a minute to be thinking of a title that you can title this. Everybody, think of a title for your piece. Write it at the top. Go. Right now. First name that comes to your mind. Thank you. Hold on. No, you're not done, Lane. All right. So we're going to take this, which is very well written. 
did a very nice job. I was there. Now we're going to bring it to life, and we are going to do this in like five minutes, all right? So we need a bobcat, right? Can, on a count of three, I want you to pick someone um, for bobcat. One, two, three. Pick someone. Okay? You're the bobcat? All right? And little blue fish? Someone? That's, this is up to him. It's not... I'm going to count to three, and I want you to... Michaela's the little blue fish. All right? And can we have the ground that is shaking, right? That's what happens, right? The ground. Can you pick someone that you don't know really well to be the ground? Yeah, someone that you maybe not know that well. Okay, well, maybe someone don't really know. Come on, Bradley. Come on. You're going to be the ground shaking, all right? Come on, Bradley. Now, one other thing. You are all going to be amazed when he gets to the word amazed so can you show me what yes thank you give me a big sound freeze freeze okay and i want you with your i'm going to be your director right now amazed is going to look like this you're not going to be sarcastic you're going to be sincere and you're going to go on a count of three see if you can do it sincerely one two three thank you that's all i need from you great did you think of a title the little blue fish. Okay. Okay. Um, would you mind getting his picture for me, please? It's right there. Okay. Now, hold on. They're not going to be able to see you, unfortunately. So I might have you do be like here. Okay. So you are my director, and I'm going to help you. Where are you sitting here? There. Okay, so I need you to be right over here, sit over here, and you talk about the bobcat. Where does the bobcat come in? Okay, bobcat, you're down here, over here, bobcat. Mm -hmm. And where's the fish? Okay, fish, you're right there, so I don't really need this. All right. So, bobcat, can you see where you are? Bobcat. Fish, you're right in that water. Okay? But now, our hearts have to be facing the audience, fish. Hearts to the audience. Yep, even if you're down, we still want to see because if you're not acting with your heart, riding with your heart, no one's going to give you their heart, right? Okay, and then we have the ground. And where's the ground? Does the ground move a little bit? Is the ground like. Yeah, it was mostly like kind of right. Okay, so I would say you're back here. You're the ground. Can you be. Is the ground, can the ground be kind of tall? Okay, you're tall. And so. Bobcat, I want you to come up with a movement and a sound. You guys wait for a second. Fish, a movement and a sound. <laughs> Ground, a movement and a sound. Shaking, let me hear it. One, two, three, strong. So oh, louder. <laughs> louder, no, that was great. That was really good. Give me a sound, <laughs> or whatever. Nice, give him a round of applause, okay? Bobcat, let me hear your sound, Bobcat. Good, good. Fish, let me hear your sound. Good, now, um, I know you're doing that with your mouth, Fish. See if you can even make it louder, like Yeah, okay, because we, you've got to hear. Okay, great. So, we're going to read this. He's going to read this again. It's called The Little Blue Fish. Okay, I'm going to say um, the title. I'm going to say The Little Blue Fish, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to slate, okay? Now, when I'm doing a movie, they slate, and then they say background. Does anybody have any idea what background is? Yeah. What? It's the background. It's the stuff that's going on in the scene. So if I was at a grocery store, it would be the people, it, the people that work at the grocery store, the, you know, right? So if we, if we are here, what are some other elements of nature that might be here? Let me hear water. Let me hear water. Let me hear some birds. Let me hear um, an airplane. Yeah. Okay, so when I call background, that's when you do that. Uh, you're going to crescendo, and then you're going to decrescendo and out. That means get louder, get softer, out. Ready? Then I'm going to call action, and you're going to start speaking. When he says bobcat, you wait a second, let her do her thing. When he says bluefish, you wait a second, let him... Let's hear him. When you say ground, you stop for a second, all right? Ready? Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Introducing. Fish, are you ready? 
Are you ready? Are you going to play? Introducing the blue fish. Background. No, wait, 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 wait. Action. I am standing and watching the frog cat nursing. Loud. At the lake, it was just standing there, and I knew it was hungry because it was just about to eat the little blue fish. Let's see you. Just about to eat the little blue fish. Good. Then I heard this big boom sound in the ground. Everybody make the big boom sound. And it didn't stop until like two minutes passed, but the bobcat was still standing at the fish, staring at the fish. Scared the fish. But I could tell it was scared. Louder. I feel, I feel amazed that the uh, Amazed. <gasps> that the bobcat just standing there, but I was scared too. What about the ground? Did we already have the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, round. Let's hear you one more time. All right, and lights out. All right. So, are you done now? All right. All right. Nice job. Wait. Let's give. Oh, wait, wait. All of you who are in that, can you stand up for a second? Stand up and you're going to take a bow. Ready? One, two, three. Everybody clap for them. <laughs> nice work. Okay. So you see how easy it is when someone writes from their heart using figurative language. It was much easier to bring to life that way, wasn't it? Thank you for writing and using your imagination today. What do you think, I'm going to take these pictures. Thank you. Thank you.